day three of the mission, some 55 hours since liftoff, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin entered the lunar module for the first time to inspect and ready it for its upcoming lunar landing attempt. Both men relayed to Houston their observations of the lunar module as they first made entry. The uh, vehicle is surprisingly free of any uh, debris floating around. It's very clean. Roger. Uh, there wasn't very much uh, debris in the command module or the limb. We found very few uh, uh, loose particles of uh, bolts, nuts and screws, and lint things. Very few in each uh, each spacecraft. They were very clean. Roger. Sounds good. What do you estimate the temperature is, Buzz? Over. Oh, I'd say maybe. Uh, 73, 75. Roger. It's uh, hard to tell uh, at this uh, density and uh, pressure of uh, gas, but the uh, comfort level is about the, about the same as the command module. It's a little we warmer or stuffier when we first got in, but uh, it seems to be improving. Houston copies out. During the telecast, Aldrin showed viewers where he would later mount a camera to photograph Armstrong's historic descent down the lunar module's ladder toward the lunar surface. I'm uh, checking out this window bracket uh, where I'll be putting it for the uh, EVA uh, pictures of Neil going down the ladder. Roger. That's about the position uh, we'll be putting the camera in after the initial descent down the ladder. And it'll be taking one frame a second for uh, most of the EVA. Houston copies out. That's a real good view of that camera. Aldrin continued with a familiarization tour of the LEMS cabin. Okay, for those of you that don't know, this is where we uh, lock most of our data for each of the uh, LEM maneuvers. And uh, we have another card like this, this is the timeline book, that uh, we place down on the table in front of the uh, that end display keyboard. And it's on this timeline that we have all our procedures. And we obviously uh, have to hold these in place in zero G, so we make use of the Velcro patches on the back and on the table. So we can attach these down here. And then we just turn the pages over when we go to new sequences in our uh, timeline of procedures. Roger. And we're ready to copy the DOI pad. Roger, right, we'll have the photos work that one up for you momentarily. We're giving you a picture now of the uh, floor of the cabin. I think you can see the uh, one of the two portable life support systems uh, backpacks here in the center. And on each side, we have the two uh, helmet visors. I'll remove one of them and show you uh, a little closer view of what this looks like. Roger. Uh, yeah. Inside the helmet visors are the EVA gloves with the blue tip. I'll not take those out now. Roger, Buzz, that's a great shot now that we're getting of the helmet, of the EVA visor, and also the, the uh, EVA gloves in the background. Okay, you did say this was going out now, didn't you? Stand by, I think so. Eleven, uh, you got a pretty big audience. It's live in the U.S. It's going live to Japan, Western Europe, and much of South America. Everybody reports very good color. Appreciate the great show. Nearly one hour and 40 minutes after it began, the crew of Apollo 11 concluded the telecast. But before signing off, Commander Armstrong, himself an Eagle Scout, passed along special greetings to a large gathering back on Earth. That's the Earth, and we have a very good view of it today. There are a few more uh, cloud bands on than uh, yesterday when we beamed down to you. But uh, it's 
a beautiful sight. And Charlie, I'd like to say uh, hello to all uh, my fellow scouts and scatters at uh, Farragut State Park in Idaho. They're having a national jamboree there this week, and Apollo 11 would like to send them best wishes. Thank you, Apollo 11. I'm sure that uh, if they didn't hear that, uh, they will get the word uh, through the uh, news. Uh, certainly appreciate that. During the television broadcast, the crew had advanced another 2,000 nautical miles toward the moon, placing them some 178,000 nautical miles from Earth.